to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. James chapter 4 from verse 6. Thank you, Jesus. James chapter 4. But he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resisted the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. This is a very powerful kingdom mystery for continuity that I learned in my own life. And I keep praying all the time that God would grant me grace. Can I tell you, it takes a lot of effort and participation to remain humble. Don't mind people who say it's easy. They've not... It's easy to be humble when you have nothing. <laughs> when the nations sing your praise, it will take intention to remain humble. Is that true? Yes. Because there are a number of us here that God probably brought us to help us. You are already marking time because your results thank god for the little you are beginning to see but not knowing that god wants to measure a thousand cubits again but pride is already distracting you pride can flatter pride can distract it's important to receive the applause of people but you must know when it has gone beyond its is allowance and by yourself create systems that manage it hallelujah this is very powerful humility you want to continue your stamina and your staying power will be derived from your ability to be and to remain humble this i have learned ask anyone who has lasted in business in ministry and all of that you find out that behind their sustaining impact and results is a life of humility. Now, let me tell you what pride is not. Pride does not mean um, when you acknowledge the blessings of God and you subscribe to the blessings and the, privilege that, the privileges that come at your level and as you are rising. That is not pride. I need to say this because mediocres call anything higher than them pride. Anything higher than them, they call it pride. So if I take water from this bottle instead of pure water to somebody, based on his level, it is pride. And his rights to him. The only problem is I am not him. Are we together? For someone maybe flying a business class or flying a private jet, he can call it pride. But you see, it is relative to your realm of achievement. It is relative to your realm of reality. We have to balance this. Are we together? Yes. As humble as Jesus was and is, he was not the one rocking the boat, taking him to the other side. The Bible says he was sleeping, justifiably so, because he's the one doing the casting of the demons. He's the one doing all of this. He said, you guys, do the other work and let me rest. So we have to, uh, let me tell you something. We'll, we'll get there shortly. You have to sustain the courage to conquer the emotional blackmail that people bring when they do not find explanation as to your growth. They will bring all kinds of reasons and call everything pride. If God has blessed you, rest in the fact that he has helped you. Don't punish yourself in the name of humility. So I'm telling you what humility is. There are some things I will never do. You will not find me washing my clothes. It's a waste of my time. It's not, it's not about there is... 
God has given someone a vision to be a dry cleaner. He will do it better. It will save my time. There is no amount of preaching that will make me go. It's not that I cannot do it. My time means a lot more. I rather invest that time in doing something constructive. Are we together now? But it is fine and honest for we have to acknowledge the fact that pride destroys. The danger with pride is not just that state, is the person who will fight you. The person who fights you when you are proud is God. If the devil fights you, you go to God to help you. But if God fights you, do you meet a man of God to help you? What oil do you put on your head to fight you when God is the one fighting? May the Lord grant us grace to be humble. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, very quickly. The stamina to continue comes from your ability to continue learning. To continue learning and to contend for improvement we continue in this kingdom we continue our exploits we are sustained I think one of the facilitators here made that statement to continue improving and to keep learning today's excellence will certainly be tomorrow's mediocrity and you have to learn and reinvent yourself and grow and stretch let me show you a scripture that really really purged me and gave me the ability to keep pressing as though i did not know anything first corinthians 8 and verse 2 first corinthians 8 and verse 2 the second key we are discussing is the passion to keep learning the passion to contend for learning and improvement first corinthians 8 and verse 2 please read with me if you can see it ready read if anyone thinks that he knows anything he says he knows nothing yet as he ought to know you know masters and champions by their passion to learn more thank god for the things i know but god must grant you the grace to know how to learn what you don't know is a grace that must be given to you from God to pursue knowledge strategic knowledge in areas where you do not know let me give you an instance for instance um, for those of you who are in ministry ministry in the north teaches you a lot about morality and character but it does not teach you so much about structure and administration in fact most Pentecostal circles do not understand structure and administration. They understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit and impact. But most Pentecostal charismatics do not last because they are not mentored to understand the power of systems and structures. That's why you find ministries like the Anglican, Catholic Church, and all of these orthodox circles that sometimes we laugh at. They may not be as... Uh, impactful as we want from a spiritual standpoint respectfully speaking now but I can tell you their structure will last no individual's failure or success can destroy the structure the structure is greater than any individual but in Pentecostal and charismatic circles even one person's mistake can can tilt the ministry for many years the ministry is a merciless reflection of the individual he's if he improves you will see if he backslides you will see so i made up my mind that in addition to learning and understanding the ministry of the holy spirit and other things i would have to submit myself to understand administration to understand structure if i truly desire to last and let me tell you this is an area in life and ministry that does not come free. You will pay for it with humility. You will pay for it financially. You, it will sting your ego. You will have to sit down and start learning afresh. Maybe this is already a word for someone. You are wondering why you cannot expand beyond a certain limit, even though you know that intrinsically you have the value to offer. Your structure is as powerful as your gift because a great oil in a small vessel will still not serve 
it says borrow vessels borrow not a few so that the gift that is within can find expression you must commit yourself to strategic learning in genesis chapter 1 and verse 16 the bible says that god made two great lights please say two great lights he says one to rule the day and the other to rule the night then he says he made the stars also he made two great lights you must contend for knowledge please let me challenge every one of us especially those of us who god has helped by his mercy i was very humbled and touched when you know reverend sam was just mentioning the things that he does you know just coming and sneaking into koinonia we're discussing that earlier on in his office it takes a lot of humility for that to happen but you see let me tell you this never get embarrassed when it has to do with knowledge when i came and i sat down here the few minutes that i spent you can't imagine the things that i learned just listening to them and as he was telling me this man is this this man is that when i sit before people who know what i do not know i don't contribute i learn for many of you you contribute even in the midst of ignorance when it is very clear that you have no idea there's no result to show don't don't feel this is training i told you i told you earlier on this is training don't feel embarrassed you must discipline yourself to keep quiet when you don't know it's cheaper than embarrassing yourself and recycling your pain and ignorance again and again someone say knowledge can I tell you this? Any kind of knowledge will not bless you. It has to be specific to the area of darkness. You must be able to write the areas of ignorance in your life. How do you know the areas of ignorance? By the absence of results. Darkness is a clue that you need light there. Thank God for darkness. Because without darkness, you cannot know where light should go. Are we together? examine the areas of darkness in your life i may be doing well in ministry but what of your finances you find out that this finance thing is it doesn't seem to open up you are not the first to do ministry you are not the first to do business find out can i tell you here is the formula go to them that sell and buy god will never never leave his church without people that sell i'm not just speaking with respect to ministry alone everything you are looking for there are those who have it and there are those who have it enough to sell it the only thing is that you don't buy it with money let me tell you the currency you use to buy from them that sell humility meekness endurance you have to endure their personalities to receive that which god has given them you cannot want to be taught at your own terms a student does not learn at his own terms that's a lazy student who will not go far adaptation is proof of honor you have to endure a lot when you are determined to learn especially from people who have results if you are elisha endure elijah's temper and learn what it takes to succeed in the prophetic because although he's a temperous man he still is the one carrying the anointing and you would think because of his temper god will take away the anointing you enjoy it hmm. it's amazing how god works isn't it yes are we learning this is very powerful many people want to learn they want to grow but they desire to be spoon fed bring it to me i won't pursue just bring it let me tell you this the proof of passion is pursued every time you are passionate about something you stand up and go and look for the answer why is this thing not working why is ministry not working why is business not working through desire proverbs 18 and verse 1 a man having separated himself the bible says he seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom there are routines of learning that i must honor every day otherwise sleep no matter how tired i am is an is a covenant of knowledge i will not go to bed until and unless and there is no excuse 
a covenant is a non-emotional binding listen you intend to grow and you challenge yourself looking at the weather waiting looking at your appetite and all of that notwithstanding there are times i return late and tired but i know i am bound by this covenant of growth i went up by revelation And you see, the higher you rise, just like Pastor was saying, many people begin to depend on your continuity. When you are, it, it becomes wickedness at a certain level to plateau because now you are not living for yourself alone. So many people are drawing their inspiration. Someone is depending on your message to find the sermon for his own church. Someone is depending on your, your the dexterity in your business. Preachers are depending on how good you are in your fashion so we dress well. Don't backslide for our sake. Are, are you learning now? Yes. The passion to learn. Pastor, I submit to you and I do this with every sense of respect and responsibility. Many preachers are lazy. I repeat, many preachers are are lazy five minutes bible study casual stumbling into a video oh it's two minutes let me listen to it you don't command power and command influence that way it takes intention and aggression don't pity your mind when it has to do with growth your mind is not tired give it the information that it will use to create your reality By the truth it says sell it not hmm. please let's obtain grace from God to be disciplined God is not a herbalist he will not commit certain levels of graces and anointings you know and sometimes I say this with every sense of humility when people see some of the things that God is doing they just think all that is making it happen is just the anointing and just luck He that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully. Nobody wins the Olympic by mistake. You can get to the field by mistake. Please hear what I'm telling you. It takes intention. And let me tell you something with knowledge. When you have it, you have gotten it. You don't fear again. You can lay hold on this truth. I submit to you that knowledge drives fear fear is derived from ignorance fear is derived from ignorance are you getting what i'm saying now this is very important you must obtain grace from god with passion and with intention obtain grace from god to go for knowledge continuous learning continuous learning continuous learning first timothy chapter 4 from verse 15 and 16. first timothy 4 15 and 16 very quickly first timothy 4 15 and 16. first timothy chapter 4 from verse 15 and 16. do not forget what we're teaching it says meditate on these things give yourself entirely or holy to them that your progress may be evident to all meditate on these things king james says give yourself holy to them that thy profiting may appear unto all there is a relationship between lack of study and shame it says study to show yourself approved unto god a workman that needed not to be ashamed someone needs to be inspired this afternoon i'm tired of celebrating and recycling ignorance it's time for me to rise to a higher level you have to outsource intelligence and information beyond your current horizon can i tell you if you celebrate mediocrity a time will come all the people that follow you will have nothing to learn from you again there is a level of leadership called leadership by results People will not follow you indefinitely. 
the dexterity of your result which is a testament of your knowledge has to be what would drive people to keep following you someone say knowledge you have to commit to continuous development continuous learning number three very quickly this is a very powerful one what is the third key to continue and to remain you must build systems and structures that protect your focus and protect your values you must build systems and structures that protect your focus and protect your values systems and structures because when you begin to command results when you begin to advance producing notable results listen very carefully there are many things that begin to happen around your life distractions challenges persecutions etc but one of the things that happen listen when you begin to succeed there are many legitimate things that will come into your life and your space and it can be distracting you have to create systems and structures to manage important things that can distract you acts chapter 6 something began to happen when the early church started advancing on the day of pentecost three thousand people were saved and then they kept having people the church was growing multiplying great results and watch what happened now in those days what days those days of advancement those days of exploits the bible says when the number of the disciples was what multiplication has a serious effect most of you your prayer for increase is not answered because the structure to manage the things that come when increase comes is not there now in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying the bible says there arose a complaint there will always be conflict there will always be issues that will arise legitimate issues that require your intelligence and before you know it you will be distracted from what brought you to that level there arose a complaint against the hebrews please go to kjv so that we can understand now the bible says that the grecians and the hebrews now started having issues why because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration so now they were blessed enough to even minister to widows verse 2 we're reading to verse 4 then the 12 called the multitude of the disciples that means the 12 were now not the only disciples they had raised other disciples structure and systems they raised okay they called the multitudes of the disciples unto them and said now hear this carefully it is not reason that we should leave the word of god and serve tables my question is is serving tables wrong remember that's how they started they started by serving tables now the responsibility upon them they cannot combine the ministry of the word and serving tables listen carefully the 12 called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said it is not reason that we should leave the word of god and serve tables verse 3 wherefore brethren look ye out among you seven men of honest report full of the holy ghost and wisdom can you see the condition to serve tables in the early church this is the condition for ministry in our day and yet this was what they needed to go through to be qualified to serve tables full of the holy ghost and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business read verse 4 together let's read in concert are you ready one to read but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word the third key you must create systems and structures that protect your focus and your values increase comes with a plethora of side effects 
one of it is distraction from your vision and let me tell you this we must obtain grace from god because most leaders have trust issues and legitimately so if you have survived in any organization in ministry or business for a while i'm sure your heart would have been battered by the reality of the human nature and chances are excellent that when you go through several disappointments it becomes difficult to trust people this is where distraction comes from the man of god the businessman wants to do everything you have five outlets of your business you want to manage everything by yourself you don't know that you are growing older you don't know that you may not be able to have that capacity to stand but we will give ourselves continually there are many people who started as ministers of the gospel and right now have become administrators they are concerned about the details of the finances legitimately so details of this and that and the core ministry from whence the grace came that announced them they have left it there are many things that i don't put my hands into so that i can focus on this many of you right now i will tell you where your spiritual fatigue is coming from there are certain levels there are certain duties that are for the people you have raised not you again to create systems and structures that protect your focus and protect your vision closely related to this i wish i had all the time when god begins to lift you beware of the people who come in the spirit and power of the young girl who came to meet the apostles they come with strange spirits not necessarily demonic spirit a strange spirit means one that is inconsistent with your vision and the pattern given to you you must have the courage to drive good people from your life just because they are good does not mean they are useful there are unnecessary baggages we carry because of emotions there are many good people who cannot enter certain seasons in your life ask every leader here they will tell you there is a height a plane cannot get to when the load is so much the lighter the higher it flies you need to decongest your life and unclog your life by and with so many things let me tell you for many of us we don't have the courage to be controversial unfortunately it is a requirement to remain if you are too scared of being controversial forget about leading the field hmm. are we blessed systems and structures that protect your focus protect your vision one time i had a group of people and they just said they were coming to my house uh, they wanted to come and give an award i've heard about them they are very treacherous people when i heard about them they said oh they're coming i said no no no. i appreciate them please carry your award and leave me i know exactly what they are looking for they prey on reputations anything that looks like a ladder they climb on it let me tell you be a, beware of many good things when the devil knows you are conscious of evil he will use good and destroy you that tree was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil both the good there and the evil can still do the same thing there are many good things you have to say no to to honor your pursuit I'm sorry to use this expression but believers prostitutes themselves to anything that looks like it can be an addition and let me tell you when you when you move like that you will not be able to grow All things are lawful but not all things are expedient the discipline of being consistent this is what God has called me to do I focus on it with determination are we together your pastor wakes up every morning to lead several people to pray you know the discipline it takes to do that it's more than grace it takes discipline your mind your alarm clock your discipline the vision that is before you there are times where you literally have to carry yourself up there are times i've traveled where my sleep will be in the plane the only thing i know is that we lifted 
it's when we're landing and sometimes i'm sleeping and sleeping and maybe the person close to me is just looking at me and i'm showing their mind of it. Ah, this man you are not an old man why are you sleeping like this depends on what you are carrying if you are carrying a cap you can leave it there and even be shaking your head but if what you are carrying is something that feeds nation sometimes you will need to rest there are many good things we need to prune in our lives right now leave the evil things you've overcome that let's talk about good things that are not profitable groups associations be careful be careful champions are champions because they minimize their lives to the necessary so that it can sharpen their focus are we together there are things you need to start delegating people to do if god trusted you while you are changing trust others too it's better for them to fail in your presence you can correct them than to out of fear allow the work to become terrible because you are protecting your reputation it's better for your sons and daughters to make the mistake while you are alive see them rebuke them cover correct correct again till they learn jesus did not wait for perfection before giving us the holy ghost he sent us we keep metamorphosing on the job you must have the courage to trust people apostle you don't know what happened all right sorry i i understand now but you have to summon the courage delegate some things and unclog your life so that your focus can be with precision this is one of the reasons why we have to pray that god will send strong financial helpers because you know sir everybody here will agree with me that one of the most distracting things when you now start rising and building structures is this finance thing we will not leave the ministry of the word and come to be serving tables hallelujah let me do a quick recap and then i'll talk about the last one number one humility the stamina to continue is derived from a life of humility number two continuous learning and improvement number three building systems and structures that protect your focus and your values this is very important first corinthians chapter 3 we'll read from verse 9 to 13 very quickly and then the last point and we're done second corinthians chapter 3 from verse 9 it says for we are laborers together with god second corinthians not chronicles first corinthians i meant to say my apologies first corinthians 3 from verse 9 first corinthians 3 from verse 9 for we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. You are God's building. Verse 10. We are reading to 13. Verse 10 now. It says, according to the grace of God which is given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builder thereon. It says, but let every man take heed how he builded thereon. Verse 11 for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid he said which is christ jesus reading to 13 verse 12 now he says now if any man build upon this foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay stubble last verse every man's work shall be made manifest and he says for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is the fire that comes from men the fire that comes from the vicissitudes of life it will try your ministry i guarantee you it will try your business but it is the house that is built on a rock that stands may everything you are involved with stand in the name of jesus christ write the various things that take your time and find out which of them you can begin to raise people around you listen if you are a leader at a certain level and you've not raised anybody around you it means you are doing something wrong everybody cannot be wrong there has to be someone that trusts you and believes you enough for you to be able to replicate yourself in them number four 
the power to continue the power to remain is derived from the ministry of prayer and intercession prayer and intercession prayer and intercession in addition to putting systems and structures that protect your focus and protect your values you must engage strategically in the ministry of prayer and intercession Luke chapter 5 from verse 15 Luke chapter 5 from verse 15 we'll read 15 and 16 Luke chapter 5 now look at this story very interesting story about Jesus the Bible says but so much the more when there a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed of him now this was a celebrity making progress the Bible says his fame had gone abroad great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed next verse the Bible says in verse 16 and he withdrew himself in the midst of the multitudes in the midst of the glamour in the midst of the wonderful things that happened he withdrew himself into the wilderness and the Bible says and prayed he withdrew himself and prayed please let's rise and honor our father is that the best you can do hallelujah most welcome sir thank you amen are we together so the bible says let's go to verse 15 again to put it in context it says but so much the more went a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed of him making progress already and yet the bible says he had the stamina and the wisdom verse 16 the bible now says he withdrew himself the Bible didn't say he went to pray. He withdrew himself. He took effort and intention. Knowing that this is the secret that brought me thus far. And even in the midst of the fame and the glamour. It would take energy. But he withdrew himself. Into the wilderness. And prayed. Prayer. And intercession. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2. When you get to certain levels of growth, you have to pray. He said, brethren, pray for us. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2. This must be the prayer of every great man. Because the moment Isaac begins to be great, the Philistines will come. They will envy what you represent. And it has nothing to do with whether you are good or bad. It's the side effect of consistency. The Bible says, finally, brethren... Pray for us. Why? Number one, that the word of God may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Number two, the second reason is that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Nehemiah, if you are building, Sambalat and Tobias will come. You don't have to call them. Your results has a voice. It does not just call those who need it. It calls naysayers. It will call any kind of person. And that we may be delivered. That means they can have an effect on you if you don't pray. Most people downplay what the devil can do using men and systems and structures to sabotage the purposes of God in your life. He said he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. Don't you think as a man of God that you are going around bringing deliverance, setting people free by the power of God's word and the devil will fold his arms and watch you. Not even Jesus was spared. Satan cometh to me, he said. 
when he left jesus after the temptation the bible says he left him for a season he went to re-strategize because weapons are fashioned they don't just come he said no weapon fashion to fashion a weapon requires study it has to study what have you left in your training that becomes the weapon that is used if you neglected finances as you are learning ministry the weapon will be fashioned after that lapse it was where Goliath did not cover. That was where David used to bring him down. That we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. And he leaves you with an information. All men, including the ones in your church, including the ones everywhere. The moment you have a multitude, he says, have this at the back of your mind. That all men have not faith. Even if you preach on rapture every day, there are people who do not have faith. Their hearts have been seared with hot iron. There will be easy praise for the devil to use. Men of God must pray. Business people must pray because you are in ministry. Are we blessed? Last scripture and then we'll pray. Matthew chapter 26 from verse 39. Matthew 26 and verse 39. Jesus is teaching here. Matthew 26 the Bible says he went a little further Jesus now and fell on his face and prayed saying oh my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not as I will but as thou wilt verse 40 and he cometh to the disciples and he found them asleep and saith unto them what could ye not watch with me one hour 41 watch and pray he said that ye enter not into temptation the spirit indeed is willing ever willing he says but the flesh is weak watch and pray watch and pray watch and pray watch and pray when you start your journey it's easy to keep going unhindered but when you get to a certain height and a certain level the philistines will come i assure you the bible says the philistines came and they envied him they envied him on account of the brightness of his rising let's wrap up with that scripture genesis 26 13 to 16. it's one thing to start but it takes another kind of dynamics to continue. And the man began to prosper. That is a level. And he continued prospering until he became. Until he became. Until he became. The man began to prosper until he became that epitome. Of prosperity and the Bible says verse 14 now he had possessions of flocks possessions of herds and a great number of servants and it did not just end there there were also other things that he had that he didn't have before the troubles that come from the Philistines the Philistines envied him they sent him and they said leave us for you are mightier than we your success will always create a reaction in the realm of the spirit and satan will use men and systems and structures but the bible says now thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph always thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph my charge to us this afternoon as i wrap up is that it is not enough to start many of us here have done well we have started ministries we've started businesses we've started several things that we walk in keeping with these keys god is not only the beginning he is also the end it takes grace to continue the grace for humility the grace for continuous learning and development hallelujah the grace for creating systems and structures that protect your focus and protect your vision and finally the power of prayer and intercession you hold these keys as the keys of the kingdom 
and with them you will be able to remain that even when everything has shaken and everything is moving haywire at the end of it you will still stand because you are building on a rock are we blessed whilst you are seated i want you to pray in one minute and ask the lord to grant you the grace he says now that you know these things happy are you if you do them now that you know these things happy are you if you do them it is not just the hearers that receive but those who hear and do is someone praying let it be from the depth of your heart you are crying out to god lord i desire to remain producing results in spite of the sambalats the tobiases i desire to remain in spite of the philistines i obtain grace that i will advance and i will continue now that i have begun grant me the grace to continue that my results will be sustained decades from now it will be sustained by engaging the truth of the kingdom someone is receiving grace and pray and say lord by the privilege of the graces here including the grace of our father that will be coming shortly that you open up your spirit and say there is no excuse for remaining at this level let it come as a prophetic push that will shift us into new levels and new dimensions the bible says go to them that sell and buy there are those who sell and you buy with humility you buy with meekness you buy with humbleness of heart dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline